Commissioner uh, Shaheen, who's, who's chair of the commission, will appear miraculously uh, on the screen. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Great. Good evening, everybody. Are we all set to begin? We are. Great. So let's begin by calling the meeting to order and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic on which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So before we get into the meeting, I would love to ask for a suspension of the rules so we can move up the promotions process. I move to suspend the rules and, and move up the promotion process to the beginning of the agenda. Second. On a roll call vote, Commissioner Schur? Aye. Commissioner Coyle? Yes. And I vote yes also. So. Acting Chief Maloney, it's all you. Take it away. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for coming. Uh, Jackie takes very good care of me as I figure out how to do things. In the last month, during the police commission meeting, she said the microphone, make sure you're talking on the microphone. I said, all right, got a microphone. So I walked from there to here, and I talked into the microphone, which was the wrong microphone that I found out afterwards. So we're already off to a better start now that I've got uh, that figured out. So um, that said, can I have uh, Sergeants McCarthy, Young, and Weber up here, if you would, please? You got one coming. <laughs> okay, gentlemen. After a competitive selection process held on April 21st, 2022, Detective Kevin McCarthy, Detective Matthew Young, and Patrol Officer Max Weber were promoted to the rank of Sergeant. It is my pleasure to vest them with the supervisory authority of Sergeant. And first, a little bit of uh, biographies on, on each. Sergeant Kevin McCarthy began his law enforcement career with the Portsmouth Police Department in 2009. For his first 10 years, he served as a patrol officer and later went on to become a detective. Sergeant McCarthy holds several assignments within the department to include crime scene investigation team member, digital forensic examiner, use of force instructor, and craze instructor. Kevin earned his Bachelor of Science degree in Chemistry from the University of Rhode Island. Sergeant Matt Young began his career in law enforcement with the Rochester Police Department, where he served three years before joining the Portsmouth Police Department. For nearly 10 years, Matt worked as a patrol officer before being promoted to detective in 2021. Sergeant Young is a current member of the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force, a defensive tactics instructor, and has previously served on the Seacoast Emergency Response Team and High Intensity Drug Interdiction Team. Matt earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in economics from the University of New Hampshire. In 2014, Sergeant Max Weber began his law enforcement career with the Portsmouth Police Department. He has dedicated seven years to working as a patrol officer. Sergeant Weber is a current member of the crime scene team, street crimes unit, and motorcycle unit, and he is one of the department's drug recognition experts and a field training officer for the field training and evaluation program designed to train new officers. Max is a graduate of Penn State with a degree in civil engineering. If I could each have you raise your right hand, please. You don't have to repeat after me. By virtue of the authority vested in me through the commission by RSA 105 CA in the Portsmouth City Charter Amendment E, trusting in your experience, integrity, and fidelity, I do hereby promote you to the position of a sergeant with the Portsmouth Police Department with all the power and authority and subject to all the duties and liabilities of this position. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Sergeant Young, if you have somebody that would like to pin your badge, we could certainly do that. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> Yeah. Sergeant McCarthy, do you have somebody? Uh, yes, just one moment. Aiden, you want to come here? Sergeant Weber, same? They're over there. <laughs> Doesn't stop. Can I have Officer Ian Estetheo come up, please? This is a swearing-in ceremony for uh, one of our newest officers. Officer Ian Estetheo is a lateral transfer from the Charleston, South Carolina, where he served two years as a police officer with the Charleston Police Department. Ian grew up in Southern Maine and is a high school graduate of Berwick Academy. Ian earned his bachelor's degree in wildlife and fisheries biology from the University of Vermont. He has relocated to the area with his wife and daughter. Ian, if you can please raise your right hand and you'll repeat after me. I. I. Ian F. Stabiu. The above named appointee. The above named appointee. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform all duties incumbent on me. Discharge and perform all duties incumbent upon me. As a police officer, constable, and night watchman of said city of Portsmouth. As a police officer, constable, and night watchman of the city of Portsmouth. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Agreeable to the rules and regulations of the Constitution. Agreeable to the rules and regulations of the Constitution. And laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Very good. By virtue of the authority vested in me through the Police Commission and RSA 105C, trusting in your integrity and fidelity, do hereby constitute and appoint you as a police officer, constable, and night watchman of said city of Portsmouth with all the power and authority and subject to all the duties and liabilities provided by law. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you have fun? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Smart. Oh, you got it. That was there for a reason. 
Thank you. Thank you all so much. Sorry that I couldn't be with you today. I, our family, unfortunately, is dealing with COVID, so we're sparing, sparing any risk of transmission from me. Uh, but I wish I could be there to commemorate and celebrate these promotions and uh, our newly sworn officer. The talent is a true testament to this department and our ability to recruit and bring some of the best and brightest in and up through the ranks. So we feel especially lucky given all the turnover that we've seen in the last 18 months to have the talent of the sergeants that were just sworn in tonight. So thank you all. I appreciate you being here. So we'll go back to the regular agenda and I'll ask for an approval of minutes from our April meeting. Uh, I move that we approve the uh, minutes from our April meeting. Second. On a roll call vote, Commissioner Schur? Aye. Commissioner Coyle? Yes. And I vote yes also. And now we can open it up to public comment. Is there anyone in the room who would like to make public comment? <laughs> Hello, my name is Stephanie Hausman. Um, I just have a couple of questions. Um, I was a part of the, um, I forget what Joe and Osco called us, the resident group representatives who worked with Commissioner Onasco and Chief Newport on a series of um, proposals that the police commission adopted last fall. And I just am wondering if there is an update, um, if there is a sense of sort of timing of when these might be enacted um, and then I just have a, a question. We haven't seen Chief Newport for a while, and I didn't know where he was or if there was any news to report on that front. Thank you. So I'll just address the few questions. Um, thank you for being here tonight. First, Chief Newport is participating in FBI Academy training at Quantico and should be back within the month. Uh, it's, a, it's a specified window of time that he has to be there to complete the training. Uh, it was training that was postponed several times as a result of COVID and actually it was training that he was planning to do before he was appointed interim chief and then made permanent chief. So we thought it was important to honor the commitment to have him complete that training and it's certainly a, a benefit to the department to have him had that experience and that additional training. So he'll be back. He did participate remotely in the budget work session with the city council last week. Uh, and has been in regular touch with Acting Chief Maloney uh, and with the Commission. In terms of the updates on the Community Advisory Group, we, we have been doing monthly report outs on the progress being made, and Commissioner Coyle has also been developing a tracking document to demonstrate progress. Obviously, uh, some, some things are contingent upon others, and some things are more time intensive than others, uh, but we do have a tracking document that we are planning to have live on the website and keep current uh, and we'll go through some of those updates in our meeting later this evening. Um, so with that, is there anyone else who would like to make public comment? Okay, I think unless you see people there that I can't see from this angle, I will close the public comment period and we'll move on to our other uh, police commission agenda items. Uh, we've already covered the first one, which was the promotions. Um, but before we go into a facilities update, I do want to acknowledge uh, and thank Detective Rochelle Jones, who many in the community has have seen and heard about her terrific and heroic police work given the incident on the bridge a couple weeks ago. The City Council acknowledged her work last night at the meeting of the City Council last night. and. We as a commission and department intend to honor her uh, at a future meeting. So stay tuned for more uh, more about that in the months, weeks ahead. 
Uh, but we did just want to acknowledge and uh, thank the council for their recognition and again, celebrate Detective Jones for her outstanding work and the, the team that helped make it happen. Uh, but you'll hear more about that in the coming in the coming weeks. Um, so with that, uh, love to hear a facilities update and Acting Chief Maloney, do you mind starting us off there? Yeah, so the main work being done right now is in the detective division. Um, as some may know, our detective division has been moved into the training room. And last week they started painting. Uh, they've almost completed the painting. Next comes uh, the flooring, then the uh, installation or reinstallation of the cubicles. But uh, we're looking at a completion time for them to move in uh, probably mid to late June, Karen. Yeah, the cubicles are being done the week of June 13th. June 13th. Uh, and then uh, the next phase of the, the building restoration would, uh, would initiate once the detective division is uh, habitable again by, uh, by detectives. I believe that's uh, moving on to the basement level. Great, and um, I think some folks in the community may have seen on Sunday, there was a front page story in the Herald about the current state of the facility. I know several members of the city council have taken the time to tour the facility as it stands today. Certainly that invitation is open to others who are interested. Um, and that really speaks to the restoration. Karen and or uh, Chief Maloney, could you share in terms of next steps on the public safety facility planning, um, it's my understanding that once the budget goes into effect with the funding allocated uh, for the additional planning that needs to be done, we can start the process of identifying who we will work with to do that planning. Yeah, that's correct. Um, we're working closely, obviously, with the city and, and DPW uh, once the budget does get passed to um, complete the next steps, which would include um, a brief revisit of the space needs study, uh, confirming the previously reached conclusion that uh, building a new building is preferable over restoring this building. Uh, and then additionally beyond that is identifying external partners and uh, drilling down on locations and then uh, even moving so far as to possibly a preliminary design if it's uh, ultimately decided that a new building uh, is is what's needed if there's anything else Great. karen on that I'd... no i was going to say um, once we move to that part um, we'll probably send out an rfp um, to get um, solicitations from different vendors okay Commissioner Schur or Quell, do either of you have anything to ask or weigh in on relative to the facilities? I don't. Nor do I. Okay. So why don't we move on to community priorities and I'll start, I'll kick it off with you, Commissioner Coyle. Certainly. So uh, we have to, uh, developed a tracking tool taking the initial um, recommendation, extrapolating from the final document from the RGR recommendations. Um, it's an itemized list which is, uh, identifies each action item, the current status, and then the timeline. And um, we anticipate that after tonight's meeting sometime in the next week or two, it will be posted to the website. So everybody, you know, the public can access it. Um, it's color coded so that you can see what items are completed, what items are ongoing. And then there are a number of items that are largely um, dependent upon the CAD system. So um, those are going to obviously, you know, we are in progress um, to uh, get that CAD system in place. But, um, you know, we're still, I think, at this point, reviewing the, um, the RFPs. So um, when, you know, obviously those items are going to be, um, will happen some, at some period, like, a, you know, there's an identified time after the CAD system is in place. Uh, so that's sort of a general um, update, specifically just because I think we're, I think um, we just have some updates on specific items and I'm going to speak to the survey methods and uh, um, having surveys. We 
there was a meeting between Lieutenant Keevney and um, UNH Survey Center. And commencing in the fall, there's going to be a generalized survey of the city, but also um, a specific target for marginalized communities within the city. Um, and just their survey methods are going to be pretty expansive, including door knocking, um, you know, online access, phone access. Um, there'll be surveys at the PD. So with an effort to make the access to surveys as easy as possible so we can get the best data. Just to, Great, thank you. Commissioner Sure, you want to jump in on your updates? Uh, yes. Um, um, I've had conversations with the uh, attorney for Primex, the, loosely the insurer for the, uh, the city, uh, and with the uh, city's attorney, and it looks like we're headed towards an agreement which will uh, uh, vest authority in the police commission to decide incident by incident uh, whether uh, the degree of transparency on the, any settlements that were made. Um, that uh, hopefully we will have a draft of that available for the next uh, the commission's meeting in June. Uh, that's what I anticipate. Great. Uh, any other updates bef before I weigh in here on the community priorities? Um, I, I just I just thought um, in terms of the uh, mobile crisis unit, uh, the, or the current belief is that it will be uh, much. Uh, it will be the nine eight eight number, which is uh, a, a, a dedicated line. Uh, for people, uh, people uh, observe observations of people in mental health crisis, and, and uh, similar to a 911 line, it's anticipated that'll be up and running on July 1st, which will be a substantial improvement of where we are now. Uh, the the are, mobile crisis units are out there, but there's still uh, staffing issues, uh, and there's still it's a statewide operation, so that's. That's all still be the kinks are still being worked out, but I anticipate by July 1st, we'll be well on the way to having that fully operational. Thank you. And again, this, this came up at the council meeting relative to the budget. So it's worth reinforcing that uh, the mobile crisis response is came out of the state's effort uh, to provide further reinforcement in the area of mental health uh, and these are being uh, managed by the regional mental health centers. So uh, in our case, Seacoast Mental Health and it's funded not through the city, but through the state. And, and ultimately we're working very closely with uh, Seacoast Mental Health to roll this out. And as you probably heard in the past, uh, Acting Chief Maloney talk about the fact that it is already working. It started in January, um, but obviously there's still staffing needs and uh, it was sort of the first six months was a phased rollout as they as they were getting staffed up and hopefully we'll have more capacity starting in July. Um, and the other thing I wanted to just report out is uh, we were able to work with uh, Lisa Wolfert on formatting of the recommendations brought forward by citizens post George Floyd's murder and part of that was really what triggered and prompted all of this work with community priorities. And one of the things we've been working to do is format that list of recommendations in the form of a report that can be shared with the Attorney General's office. Uh, and that is actively underway now. Um, we, we're grateful to Lisa for her efforts to put that in a format we can work now to, to further uh, enhance with graphics and, and print it up so we can share it accordingly. So. We'll, that will also live on the website as soon as it's final, finalized and ready to be shared. All right, anything else on that topic before we move on? All right, moving on to um, budget work session and planning. Um, we'll let uh, Karen follow up on more detail, but uh, I, I just wanna commend Acting Chief Maloney for jumping in last week and presenting to a work session of the city council on the department's budget and our total budget request. Uh, I know Commissioner Schur and I were able to be there to, to 
listen in. We didn't have to add any uh, anything because he was able to cover all the bases with Karen's help. And I think it was a very thorough and complete uh, review of what our request is. Obviously, people can see that full request uh, through the city's website and and all the de there's lots of detail there. Uh, but I did just want to give an update on where things stand now and uh, we'll let Karen fill in some of the more <laughs> specifics when we're under the chief's agenda item. Any Anything else on this topic before we move on? All okay. right, okay, turning it over to you, Chief Maloney. Okay, uh, first off, we have a donation in the amount of $5,000 from Alex Choquette, and this is earmarked for the Portsmouth Police Department's Honor Guard uh, to, attain, uh, to attend specific training as it relates to uh, Department Honor Guards. Um, I move uh, to accept the donation in the amount of $5,000 from Alex Choquette for the Honor Guard and, for, and to forward uh, to the City Council that, uh, that donation uh, for their action. Second. Honorable call vote, Commissioner Scher. Aye. Commissioner Coyle. Yes. And I vote yes also with a, a sincere thanks to Alex. He's a terrific member of the community and nice to see He's stepping forward to help the honor guard. Uh, next, we have uh, traffic stats for the month of April. Uh, we had 1,000 traffic stops, 90 in custody arrests, um, and we categorize arrests in, in two different ways. You can you can arrest somebody by virtue of the fact of a summons, which is uh, a summons that the, you, you hand to them and you release them on scene. You don't take them into physical custody. And then we have in-custody arrests, which involves taking somebody into custody. So we had uh, 90 in-custody arrests in, in April. We had 72 summonses. Uh, you'll have to excuse me. I gave the initial number up top of 1,000. Motor vehicle stops for the month of April was 737, not, uh, not 1,000. Uh, in total motor vehicle crashes, uh, reportable motor vehicle crashes in the city in April was 41. And uh, just for those who wonder what's the difference between a reportable and a non-reportable, uh, reportable would be damage to both vehicles um, or property in excess of $1,000. So um, we had 41 total reportable crashes in the month of April. Uh, Karen, I'll turn it over to you for... Uh, financial report okay in FY 22 um, we are now 4% below the cap which is very good uh, we're still watching overtime um, but the difference between the overage in overtime and the underage in Sal Benz is still uh, good um, right now the big push is on recruiting um, we got an update today I don't know if the chief can talk further about that but we've got several officers in the pipeline, but um, in dispatch, we're still having a problem recruiting. So they're gonna be getting uh, different materials, different options to try and recruit on both those ends. There will be costs associated with those, and we're going to use some of the funds this year. They aren't budgeted, but we're gonna use some of those funds toward that end. Um, and in FY23, um, the budget work session was last Tuesday. Um, we are working on some supplemental materials and um, expanding on our answers to some of the questions um, that the City Council asked just so that um, we can uh, maybe pursue a <laughs> more of our um, data and whatnot on uh, supporting the officer, uh, two officers and the crime analyst positions. Um, the strategic plan, we're still working on it just a little bit. Um, it's my fault. Um, I have to get it to the chief in Virginia. He's going to be writing his uh, intro letter to that, um, and then we will get that out. Um, in terms of grants, we've submitted the New Hampshire Highway Safety that you approved. And in terms of the ICAC ARPA, um, that is still moving through the channels in Concord. Um, we're not sure when we're going to get approval on that, if we're going to get approval on that, but it's looking good. Um, as uh, Lieutenant Kinsman said, the workload has expanded exponentially because of COVID and it's not um, slowing down. So he can justify uh, the funds. I think he asked for about 700,000 on that. 
we had 200,000 on a previous ARPA approved. So um, we're hoping that that gets through. And then we're just uh, working on the Bulletproof Vest grant right now. That'll be before you soon. And I think that's it. And Thank that's you, it, Karen. Please. Any questions from Commissioner Sugar Coyle on the financials? Uh, none from me. Nor for me. Okay, before we close out this portion of the agenda, I just wanted to read into the record uh, a letter from Pat Bagley uh, about the incident that transpired on the bridge a couple, week, or, week or so ago. Um, please, for the record, please accept this token of appreciation to Officer Jones for a job superbly done saving a life Many years ago, I was trained as a volunteer to provide listening resources and crisis suicide intervention for a mental health service in New Jersey. Most calls were re we received were benign, informational type. What we all dreaded were the true crisis suicide calls. I received, quote, only one. It resolved well, but it has stayed with me. I remember trying to use what listening skills we had been taught, but somehow almost couldn't breathe. Living within walking distance of a river spanned by three bridges provides a lesson all too often of how precious life is. Our daughter had texted to ask why the bridge was closed, not knowing I replied it could be a jumper. Sadly, that is our chilling reality. Thank you, Rochelle, for another job well done. You are a tremendous, you have tremendous heart and courage. We are lucky to have you as one of Portsmouth's finest, gratefully, Pat Bagley. So any other topics or miscellaneous business we'd like to cover before adjourning the meeting? None. Nor for me. Okay, can we get a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. On a roll call vote, Commissioner Scher. Aye. Commissioner Coyle. Yes. And I vote yes to adjourn also. Thank you all. Thank you.